time when they well, we'll throw this kind of we'll throw in a little affordable housing into the mix, and, you know, and I I think we want more from TDC than it than it to be the you know the thing that gets an oversized project approved that would otherwise not get. Approved. Well, we do have um, uh, the project that was approved for 101 High. Uh, that developer sold out his property to Shorenstein, um, who is donating it for a fee of one dollar to the city to build that project at 100 percent affordable to offset their uh, 1066 Market Street project, which will be 350 units of market rate housing. Um, and I have to say, on, on that particular topic, it was because TNBC appealed the project that we were even able to secure that money from Shortenstein to, to the 401 high. Um, it, it kind of, um, and it, it reputational, reputational damage to TNBC. I mean, but they, they, were willing to, they took that hit and on behalf of the community. Uh, Shortenstein used to be a good supporter of TNBC and financially as well. Um, obviously, since that, uh, all of that support you know, stop. Shrinesteen's not speaking to TNDC anymore. Mm -hmm. But He's now alive. Um, TNDC took that took that hit. Um, so I will say, like, they do some good things on the African community. I just want to say, yeah, I, I do a lot of good things. I might be surprised, somewhat surprised, if there was actually that big of a rift between Shrinesteen because this it is, is really big. They're oh, really? speaking to us. Yeah. I mean, the they were big supporters. The totality of the deal is a pretty big win for Shrinesteen. So anyway, so. That's the, that's the update on all that going on. Um, I also have a community evaluation plan certificate of determination for 280, 282, 7th Street, which is a, um, it's currently a two-story uh, building, commercial building built in 1906. Um, and it's located in the Western Soma Light Industrial and Residential Historic District. Um, and they plan to build uh, two buildings with ground, yard, ground floor interior courtyard um, and uh, hang on a minute, my clip's in the way. Uh, two buildings consisting of 19,247 square foot, uh, one six story, and uh, uh, containing 17 dwelling units, um, including 11 one bedroom units and six two bedroom units, and a common open space. And um, the other building uh, is 79 Langton Street and is uh, 6,335 square foot five-story building with three dwelling units, uh, one of which would be one one bedroom and uh, two three bedroom with private open space. Um, so that is uh, working its way now through the commission process. Also, I have a project which I just got in uh, the uh, historic documentation on, which is not in the tender line, but it's in, uh, to me it's an important project which is 2214 Kalega, anyway, C-A-Y-U-G-A Avenue. How you 30, Yeah, that. And 3101 Alameda Boulevard. And um, it consists of a single family home built in 1900 uh, that they want to tear down and build four new buildings um, consisting of uh, two to four units per building. And I was really concerned about tearing down a 1900 house um, until I talked to the planner. And the entire inside of the house has been remodeled four or five times and has nothing historic in it. Uh, if you look at the outside of the house, it's not particularly historic. Uh, the, de the designer and builder, nobody knows about. Uh, he did, never did anything of any value. Everybody who's owned it never did anything of any value. Um, and it doesn't meet any of the criteria under CEQA to even scratch off at a level C building, let alone anything else. So they can tear it down. 
Um, and what they want to do is uh, build, actually build four new buildings for the total of seven residential units um, and two buildings, one four story uh, with two residential units. <coughs> and I'm still waiting for environmental documents on that one. Uh, there was a problem with Cayuga uh, flooding of some kind, or, or there was some kind of, uh, uh, well, <coughs> you know. It all got muddy and horrible. Well, originally there was the house and there was an industrial building on the corner. The industrial building apparently burned down, fell down, or was torn down, and is now the backyard and side yard of the house. Um, and they, it's a corner lot that ha is slightly odd, long, odd, odd shape of alamine. It comes like at an angle and goes around. It's a really weird design. and. Um, but uh, there's nothing there <laughs> except the house that no, they're there. Has been there forever and been so badly remodeled that there's nothing historic about it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, that's that. On April 26, there's a hearing before the Planning Commission on a downtown authorization for 120 Stockton Street at O'Farrell, uh, which is to convert um, to, uh, to allow. 500, 5,000 square feet of office use and a par to partially convert a single tenant retail building into a multi-tenant use uh, with, propo with, pro with a proposal for retail in the basement through the fifth floor and office use on the sixth and seventh floor and a partial one-story vertical addition to be used as a restaurant. And on April 25th, in front of the zoning administrator, there's 340 Division Street, which is a proposal to demolish an existing 1,415 4, 1, square foot office building and construct a approximately 14,322 square foot four story commercial trade shop building with accessory office use and four ground floor parking spaces which I am really in favor of. PDR. I mean, we're actually mm -hmm. doing something decent for the building. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another zoning uh, hearing on the 25th for 2799 24th Street at York, which is demolishing a one-story laundromat and constructing a three-story, four-unit residential building with ground floor commercial that it will be within the required rear yard of 24th and York Street um, and needs two uh, uh, variances, one for rear yard and one for uh, um, development uh, that's not set back 25 feet on a, on a lot. Then there's a notice of building permit application um, for 608 Divisadero is outside the neighborhood, but I think it's important because they want to change the use of a vacant space um, in a recently converted church into a limited restaurant, uh, which, which would be a frozen yogurt shop, shop called The Loving Cup. I have checked, they are, doing, they are not going after an ABC license. And on the 20th, also on the 26th of April, uh, there's a hearing for 425 Mason Street, which is to rehabilitate the historic Spring Valley Water Company building built in 1922 by Willis Polk, a recognized historical architect, um, and to convert it from office use to hotel use. The project would preserve the historic lobby features um, subject to the preservation easement and create 77 tourist hotel rooms on the upper floors and establish a roof, rooftop lounge with an existing one-story penthouse. Uh, due to the building's historic designation as a contributory building to the Kearney Market Mason Sutter Conservation District, the project was reviewed for conformance with Article 11 of the Planning Code and was granted an approval for minor permit to alter. That used to be owned where by the water the department. Where, where is that building at? Uh, 425 Mason Street at Derby. At what? At Derby. Derby. 
that uh, well, the, um, the Glide housing project and subways on the 100 block of Mason. Yeah. Um, so is, the, is that that big? So that would be, that that big, that'd be uh, between O'Farrell and um, uh, Gary. No, no, it would be Gary and Pope's. Gary and Pope's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know what. Big gray building that's yeah. just packed up past the parking lot. You know where the parking lot's at, right there. Yeah, the I mean, it used to be a water company. Yeah. The big gray, like gray, ugly looking building that's been shut down and boarded up for years and years and years. Well, okay. Well, that'd be nice to have them put something there. Mm -hmm. That uh, thing's been ugly. And then there's also for a finished use before the planning commission. Um, to establish a public paid parking garage at 1222 Harrison Street at 8th Street uh, in what's called the WMUG, which is Western Soma uh, uh, Area Plan District, pursuant to Planning Code 142, 156, 303, and 844.41. Proposed public paid parking garage would occupy a maximum of 45 of the existing parking spaces and an accessory parking garage uh, for an existing development on the site. So they're, they're taking part of the parking lot and making it public parking. Then I have one for uh, 1750 Harrison at 14th and Division. The conditional use is to establish a public pay parking lot um, in a PDR 1G zoning district, um, for which is currently um, occupied as a parking lot for office max. Then on April 19th, um, there's a uh, hearing uh, before the Planning Commission to change the boundary line of the Central Soma Plan Conservation District by adding um, lots 39, 54, 21, and 23 at Fifth and Mission to the district. And it proposes to change the boundary of the Kearney Market, Mason Sutter Conservation District, um, uh, part of the Central Soma Study Area Plan uh, for the historic context statement and survey edition, and I have no idea how I'm going to work on that one. Um, also on the 26th, 1140 to 1150 Harrison Street between 7th and 8th is a conditional use to demolish an existing 75,625 square foot industrial building and new construction of a six to seven story. Uh, 427,936 square foot mixed use building, including 371 dwelling units, six ground floor commercial spaces with accessory residential use. The project includes 29,800 square feet of open space, 69,493 square feet of basement for 170 auto parking spaces, 420 class one and two bicycle parking spaces, and um, has needs modification requirements for rear yard, open space, permitted obstruction, exposure, off street parking, off street loading, building height, height limits for narrow street, and mid block alley uh, pursuant to a whole mass of planning codes. That's a lot of variances. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's like, That's like this half, a dozen, zoning code. Zoning code. Like half a dozen planning codes on that one. Yeah. Uh, then I have a project receiving environmental review for which I have called for documents for 1523 Franklin Street, uh, which is approximately 400, uh, 4,200 square foot rectangle shaped lot on the southwest corner of Franklin and Austin Streets in Western Edition. Um, currently it contains a 25 foot tall, two story over partial basement office building built in 1928. The project would add six stories to the existing building and include interior and exterior alterations, um, uh, which would result in an eight story over partial basement, mixed use building with seven dwelling units, 
649 square feet of ground floor retail, and the dwelling unit is a one four bedroom and six three bedroom units. Proposed project would also have 1,573 square feet of common roof deck and 2,181 square feet of private open space in the form of balconies and patios. How was the cross street on that? Huh? What's the cross street? Um, it doesn't really say. 1,400. Uh, it's, um, Yeah, well, it might be closer to Sacramento or something. Is like, uh, I think, Sutter maybe. It might be closer to Sacramento. I don't know. I don't know. In front of the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, 342 Lexington Street, is a proposal to correct the violation involving the removal of exterior finishes on a primary and visible side facade, which exceeds the work approved uh, under case number 2016-014859-COA. Uh, this is a, a, a notice of violation that has to be corrected. Uh, and the building was built in 1876 and is a contributor to Article 10, Liberty Hill Landmark District. Oh. Uh, for, also on the 19th before the Planning Commission and the Zoning Administrator is 3042 California Street, which is between Baker and Lyon out by the mm -hmm. hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. Proposal is uh, to demolish a partially reconstructed two-story, two-unit building at the rear of the subject property. Um, and looks like that's what it's for. Then uh, Some, some information from the Board of Supervisors, which I'm getting under 30-day rule. And, um, one, Supervisor Peskin is planning, is proposing to limit hotel uses in Telegraph, North Beach, Residential Special Use District, and North Beach Neighborhood Commercial District. That's under 30-day rule of land use. And uh, there's also Supervisor Tang is proposing a, an accessory dwelling unit waiver to modify uh, bicycle parking requirements and accessory dwelling units and allow more than one unauthorized unit constructed without a permit to be legalized exempt from permit notification requirement ADUs constructed within the defined existing built envelope, allow conversion of standalone garages and storage structures into, the, into uh, uh, dwelling units and a uh, few other things along that line. You heard testing has put forward legislation to repeal the Twitter tax break, right? Probably a somebody good idea. They didn't do much. Somebody looks like Otto or somebody left their backpack. Oh. He's in the restroom. Oh. Uh, there is an, uh, there was an item on budget on the 12th, which is amazingly enough tomorrow, uh, to sale tax exempt general obligation bonds not to exceed $189,735,000 to uh, provide earthquake safety and emergency response from 2014 series 2018C bonds. There's also an affordable housing bond measure um, 
to issue $146 million worth of bonds.